Good morning. Welcome to our first ever OpenAI Dev Day. We're thrilled that you're here, and this energy is awesome. Today, we've got about 2 million developers building on our API for a wide variety of use cases, doing amazing stuff. Over 92% of Fortune 500 companies building on our products. And we have about 100 million weekly active users now on ChatGPT. Today, we are launching a new model, GPT-4 Turbo. GPT-4 Turbo will address many of the things that you all have asked for. So let's go through what's new. We've got six major things to talk about for this part. Number one, context length. A lot of people have tasks that require a much longer context length. GPT-4 supported up to 8K, and in some cases up to 32K context length. But we know that isn't enough for many of you and what you want to do. GPT-4 Turbo supports up to 128,000 tokens of context. That's 300 pages of a standard book, 16 times longer than our 8K context. And in addition to longer context length, you'll notice that the model is much more accurate over a long context. Number two, more control. We've heard loud and clear that developers need more control over the model's responses and outputs. So we've addressed that in a number of ways. We have a new feature called JSON mode, which ensures that the model will respond with valid JSON. This has been a huge developer request. It'll make calling APIs much easier. The model is also much better at function calling. You can now call many functions at once. And it'll do better at following instructions in general. We're also introducing a new feature called reproducible outputs. You can pass a seed parameter, and it'll make the model return consistent outputs. This, of course, gives you a higher degree of control over model behavior. This rolls out in beta today. And in the coming weeks, we'll roll out a feature to let you view log probs in the API. All right, number three, better world knowledge. You want these models to be able to access better knowledge about the world. So do we. So we're launching retrieval in the platform. You can bring knowledge from outside documents or databases into whatever you're building. We're also updating the knowledge cutoff. We are just as annoyed as all of you, probably more, that GPT-4's knowledge about the world ended in 2021. We will try to never let it get that out of date again. GPT-4 Turbo has knowledge about the world up to April of 2023, and we will continue to improve that over time. Number four, new modalities. Surprising no one, Dolly 3, GPT-4 Turbo with Vision, and the new text-to-speech model are all going into the API today. It also unlocks a lot of use cases, like language learning and voice assistance. Speaking of new modalities, we're also releasing the next version of our open source speech recognition model, Whisper v3 today and it'll be coming soon to the API. It features improved performance across many languages, and we think you're really going to like it. OK, number five, customization. Fine-tuning has been working really well for GPT 3.5 since we launched it a few months ago. Starting today, we're going to expand that to the 16K version of the model. Also starting today, we're inviting active fine-tuning users to apply for the GPT 4 fine-tuning experimental access program. The fine-tuning API is great for adapting our models to achieve better performance in a wide variety of applications with a relatively small amount of data. But you may want a model to learn a completely new knowledge domain or to use a lot of proprietary data. So today, we're launching a new program called Custom Models. With Custom Models, our researchers will work closely with a company to help them make a great custom model, especially for them and their use case using our tools. OK, and then number six, higher rate limits. We're doubling the tokens per minute for all of our established GPT-4 customers so that it's easier to do more. And you'll be able to request changes to further rate limits and quotas directly in your API account settings. So we're introducing Copyright Shield. Copyright Shield means that we will step in and defend our customers and pay the costs incurred 
if you face legal claims around copyright infringement. And this applies both to ChatGPT Enterprise and the API. And let me be clear, this is a good time to remind people, we do not train on data from the API or ChatGPT Enterprise ever. All I'm right. super excited to announce that we worked really hard on this, and GPT-4 Turbo, a better model, is considerably cheaper than GPT-4. By a factor of 3x for prompt tokens, and 2x for completion tokens starting today. So the new pricing is one cent per thousand prompt tokens and three cents per thousand completion tokens. For most customers, that will lead to a blended rate more than 2.75 times cheaper to use for GPT-4 Turbo than GPT-4. We worked super hard to make this happen. We hope you're as excited about it as we are. So we decided to prioritize price first because we had to choose one or the other, but we're gonna work on speed next. We know that speed is important too. Soon you will notice GPT-4 Turbo becoming a lot faster. We're also decreasing the cost of GPT-3.5 Turbo 16K. Also, input tokens are 3X less and output tokens are 2X less, which means that GPT-3.5 16K is now cheaper than the previous GPT-3.5 4K model. Running a fine-tuned GPT-3.5 Turbo 16K version is also cheaper than the old fine-tuned 4K version. So today, we're taking our first small step that moves us towards this future. We're thrilled to, uh, we're thrilled to introduce GPTs. GPTs are tailored versions of ChatGPT for a specific purpose. You can build a GPT, a customized version of ChatGPT for almost anything, with instructions, expanded knowledge and actions, and then you can publish it for others to use. And because they combine instructions, expanded knowledge, and actions, they can be more helpful to you. They can work better in many contexts, and they can give you better control. They'll make it easier for you to accomplish all sorts of tasks or just have more fun, and you'll be able to use them right within ChatGPT. You can, in effect, program a GPT with language just by talking to it. So now, we'd like to show you a GPT Live. So to start, where your GPT will live is on this upper left corner. I'm gonna start with clicking on the Zapier AI Actions. And on the right hand side, you can see that's my calendar for today. So it's quite a day. I've already used this before, so it's actually already connected to my calendar. To start, I can ask, what's on my schedule for today? We build GPTs with security in mind. So before it performs any action or share data, it will ask for your permission. So right here, I'm gonna say allowed. So GBT is designed to take in your instructions, make the decision on which capability to call to perform that action, and then execute that for you. So you can see right here, it's already connected to my calendar. It pulls into my, my information, and then I've also prompted it to identify conflicts on my calendar. So you can see right here, it actually was able to identify that. So it looks like I have something coming up. So what if I wanna let Sam know that I have to leave early? So right here I say, let Sam know, I gotta go, um, chasing GPUs. <laughs> so with that, I'm gonna swap to my conversation with Sam, and then I'm gonna say, yes, please run that. Sam, did you get that? I did. Awesome. And later this month, we're gonna launch the GPT store. You can list a GPT, thank you. I appreciate that. You can list a GPT there, and we'll be able to feature the best and the most popular GPTs. Of course, we'll make sure that GPTs in the store follow our policies before they're accessible. Revenue sharing is important to us. We're gonna pay people who build the most useful and the most used GPTs a portion of our revenue. We're excited to foster a vibrant ecosystem with the GPT store. Just from what we've been building ourselves over the weekend, we're confident there's gonna be a lot of great stuff. We're excited to share more information soon. 
So those are GPTs, and we can't wait to see what you'll build. But this is a developer conference, and the coolest thing about this is that we're bringing the same concept to the API. <laughs> Many of you have already been building agent-like experiences on the API. For example, Shopify's Sidekick, which lets you take actions on the platform, Discord's Clyde, lets Discord moderators create custom, custom personalities for, and Snap's My AI, a customized chatbot that can be added to group chats and make recommendations. These experiences are great, but they have been hard to build, sometimes taking months, teams of dozens of engineers. There's a lot to handle to make this custom assistant experience. So today we're making that a lot easier with our new assistance API. The Assistance API includes persistent threads, so they don't have to figure out how to deal with long conversation history, built-in retrieval, code interpreter, a working Python interpreter in a sandbox environment, and of course, the improved function calling that we talked about earlier. Today. So we'd like we introduced GPTs, custom versions of ChatGPT that combine instructions, extended knowledge, and actions. We launched the Assistance API, to make it easier to build assistive experiences with your own apps. These are our first steps towards AI agents, and we'll be increasing their capabilities over time. We introduced a new GPT-4 Turbo model that delivers improved function calling, knowledge, lowered pricing, new modalities, and more. And we're deepening our partnership with Microsoft. We hope that you'll come back next year. What we launched today is going to look very quaint relative to what we're busy creating for you now. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you for coming here today.